and talking to people who have been affected by both the shooting and the fire. What can you tell us? That's right, Nick. So this morning I was at an evacuation center and I met a woman who, um, you know, had slept, in, slept at the evacuation center that night and she was very sleepy and she told me that she hadn't gotten much sleep for the past two nights because the first night um, she was up with a friend who was worried that her son, you know, she, she hadn't heard from her son and, it, and she was worried her son was at the borderline. Um, it turned out her son wasn't there, but this woman I spoke with, you know, had been up all night with her friend. And then Thursday night, um, she'd gone to a candlelight vigil because one of her co-workers' sons was killed at the borderline. Um, so she was at that candlelight vigil. And then a couple hours later, she came home, um, went to sleep, and then at 3 a.m., um, um, was awakened by a friend that they had to get out of there. Her apartment smelled like, you know, smelled so smoky. It smelled like barbecue. And she eventually got to the evacuation center. And when I spoke with her, she was just saying, you know, I just can't wait until all this bad stuff is over here. And I can't wait until we get back to normal. Um, it was quite poignant. I followed her home and, um, you know, she got home and she was saying, man, I need a shower, I need a nap. And then she said, you know, I think I want to go out and buy some water and snacks just in case... Like there's another calamity just in case there's an earthquake because there seems like there's so many bad things happening here right now. Rebecca Plevin, thanks for the report. Thank you. Rebecca Plevin with the Desert Sun newspaper, also reporting this week for the Ventura County Star on the um, borderline shooting and also on the Woolsey fire as it burns through Malibu. We're going to switch live now to a news conference, an update on the Woolsey fire. First, I'd like to welcome up to the podium tonight the mayor of the city of Thousand Oaks, Mr. Andy Fox. Just uh, 48 hours ago, our city experienced a tragedy that uh, had national implications with the mass shooting and the loss of life of 13 individuals. And here we are just a few hours later, uh, now talking about another crisis right here in Thousand Oaks. The distinction I want to make at the outset is, is the uh, victims and the families of the shooting, that was a permanent crisis. Uh, those lives will never be recovered. Uh, tonight, we're talking about a serious fire situation, but thankfully, we have not lost a single life. And as difficult as it may be, homes can be rebuilt, property can be reacquired. And so I want to take the opportunity once again to thank uh, the Sheriff's Department, the allied law enforcement agencies, our partners with the fire service, who've done once again a tremendous job in very difficult circumstances. As I know all of you are aware, Fire departments are not able to put out wind-driven brush fires. Our best efforts uh, as a community is to evacuate, protect property as best we can. And as I mentioned, we have not lost a single life thus far. And the firefighters and our law enforcement agencies have done a fantastic job of keeping the public safe, protecting as much property as possible. Uh, we are, as a city in Thousand Oaks, we've evacuated almost 75% of our city. And that means that some of the folks that were affected by the shooting just a few days ago likely were asked to leave their home on top of that. So keep their families in your thoughts and prayers. And again, I just want to thank all the emergency first responders and our community for their cooperation um, with our law enforcement and fire officials. And we're not through this yet, uh, but we have really done a good job thus far. Thank you. Next up to the podium, I'd like to ask Ventura County Supervisor Linda Parks. So I, I too want to thank the first responders. Many of them uh, haven't been to sleep in a couple of days uh, with the most tragic of any response they've ever had to do uh, just yesterday. And then seeing today uh, the amazing work they're doing, just nothing but all respect for these heroes. Many of them, too, who are evacuated. When you think about it, our community has tens of thousands of people that are evacuated, mandatory evacuations uh, from Oak Park to Bell Canyon to Malibu, uh, Yerba Buena area, and, of course, in Thousand Oaks area. A lot of people, including myself and some of the folks behind me, the firefighters themselves are all seeing them having to uh, see that their houses are evacuated on top of it all. So I just want to give my love out to my community. 
um, give my thanks out to the firefighters and the first responders that are out there doing the hard stuff so that we can be safe. And, and listen, um, it's all about saving your life, not your property. You want information? Please go to vcemergency.org. Thank you very much. I'd also like to acknowledge present but not speaking Ventura County Supervisor Kelly Long, Thousand Oaks Council Member Claudia Bill De La Pena, CEO of Ventura County Mike Powers, and the office from the 3rd District County of Los Angeles Supervisor Sheila Kuehl. Next up, I'd like to welcome law enforcement members of our unified command from the California Highway Patrol, Lieutenant Kevin Kirker. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming today. I want to thank the press for pushing this uh, important message out to the public. So as of right now, we have the US 101 shut down northbound and southbound uh, at Lindero Canyon to um, Valley Circle. We also have the, uh, the PCH shut down. And what we're doing is we have opened up all four lanes, pushing everything southbound. We've collaborated with Santa Monica Police Department, Los Angeles Police Department, um, the, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, um, and, the, and the, some of the intersecting streets that go into that. We've also collaborated with uh, Caltrans to where they've shut down the westbound 10 freeway and they're pushing traffic into the city of Santa Monica. And we have shut down the off ramps on eastbound coming out of the McClure Tunnel. We're also facilitating traffic because we're going from four lanes to two lanes right before the McClure Tunnel. And we're facilitating the traffic there to try to get that merging and, and getting through there fa as fast as we can. Um, we're also currently um, starting to put our focus on the Topanga Canyon region. Uh, it's under mandatory evacuation right now and we're getting resources in place. We're gonna be pushing traffic north and south. So we're gonna be pushing traffic southbound to the PCH. And we've already have uh, the mechanics in place to get that out of there, going southbound through PCH as I previously discussed. And we're also pushing traffic northbound up to the 101 corridor. Thank you. Next up from the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, Sergeant Eric Bouchou. Thanks, Captain. Good evening. In the time that this fire has been burning, our emergency operations center has notified more than 95,000 residents of Ventura County to evacuate. We appreciate the cooperation of the community in facilitating those evacuations quickly. There are still many areas that are under mandatory evacuation. Those haven't been lifted yet. So for the latest information on that, people can go to vcemergency.com. And that's being updated continuously 24 seven. So that's the most up-to-date information for residents to go to. Um, we're in a situation where this fire is moving quickly conditions are changing rapidly. So for road closures and all of the details of evacuation centers, that can all be found on that website. Thank you very much. Next up, from Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, Chief John Benedict. Good evening. Um, thank you all for being here today. Um, just want to let you know that uh, as of uh, right now, we have over 600 law enforcement uh, agencies, not agencies, but uh, law enforcement personnel out here working the fire scene. Out of that 600, uh, there's 200 uh, Los Angeles County deputy sheriffs that are working uh, very diligently to secure the uh, evacuations that are in place and the property that uh, is, we're trying to keep secure in the areas of the fire damage. Uh, right now, we have uh, cities uh, that are under evacuation that include Hidden Hills, Calabasas, Agora, um, Malibu, and uh, Hidden Hills. Um, of those cities, 
We also have evacuations that are new in, in the Oak area, which is in the Calabasas, north and south near the Moreau Road. We also have Topanga Canyon, as was just mentioned. Uh, Topanga Canyon is being evacuated. We have units that are rolling there right now. And that area is uh, from Malibu Canyon, uh, east all the way to Topanga Canyon. And those, uh, as uh, we just said, they're gonna be funneled in through PCH and up through the 101 area. I can tell you this, that the, uh, the evacuations are going very well. We wanna thank all the citizens that have uh, cooperated with the evacuations that we put forward. And we just wanna remind everybody that when they do uh, hear us come and knock on your door, or we make those announcements, to please move as quickly as possible and, and leave the area. We need to get fire equipment in there. We need to get those evacuees out as quickly as we possibly can. Um, the areas that are down towards Malibu Canyon, we have some traffic flow down there that is actually leaving and going towards the Santa Monica area. We're trying to get those folks out as quickly as we possibly can as well. We have several uh, websites and our Facebook page and our Twitter page that you can go on for information about where our uh, shelters are and where the road closures are. And we'd uh, look forward for you to go there and, and take a look at that information. Well, thank you very much. Next up, from the Ventura County Fire Department, Fire Chief Mark Lorenzen. Uh, thank you and good evening. I'd like to just take a, a quick moment just to recognize not just our fire first responders, but all of our law enforcement first responders. What I witnessed last night in the area above Hope, uh, Oak Park was uh, truly heroic actions, especially from our law enforcement partners that were literally pulling people out of burning homes. You hear them talk so frequently about evacuations, but it's so hard to understand what really truly goes behind that. So we're such a fortunate community to have such amazing first responders. A quick update on the Hill Fire. The fire is holding at approximately 6,000 acres. We're making good progress on it and we remain optimistic. Uh, a completely different scenario is the, our current fire here, the Woolsey Fire. Uh, it is, has grown significantly. We are still experiencing significant problems, even in the Ventura County areas. We had some significant activity in the Bell Canyon area, and then also in the areas of uh, Wood Ranch, and also in the eastern and western portions of Simi Valley. So my message to the public is, even though the wind has died down, stay on guard. We're in the seventh year of a drought. Our, our, our weather conditions out there and our fuel conditions are absolutely ripe for fire. So be safe, pay attention to the media, and when we ask you to leave, please leave early. Next from the Los Angeles Fire Department, Deputy Chief Trevor Richmond. Good evening and thank you for being here today. Under the leadership of Mayor Eric Garcetti and our Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas, the Los Angeles Fire Department has committed significant resources to this incident. Presently, as we speak right now, we have over 40 engine companies in the West Valley in Los Angeles actively engaged in protecting structures and saving lives. As Chief Lorenzen alluded to, all of this could not be done without the combined efforts of all the departments you see here. Um, as we've seen, fires don't recognize city boundaries and they move very quickly into other jurisdictions. We've developed relationships in this region that we know each other by name and we can fight these fires and, and do them effectively. Uh, so on behalf of the Los Angeles Fire Department, thank you very much. Next up from the Los Angeles County Fire Department, Fire Chief Daryl Osby. Hey, well, good evening. Thank you everyone for being here. Daryl Osby, Fire Chief of the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And on behalf of my supervisor, Honorable Supervisor Sheila Keel, who's a third district here, she's very thankful for the first responders that are here today battling this fire and ensuring that our citizens are safe. And also she's thankful for the media this here as it relates to the coverage of this incident and their public education. Uh, today's efforts have been a very challenging and a valiant effort on behalf of all first responders. As you know, the fire jumped 
the 101 freeway in several locations, um, in Westlake, Agora, and Calabasas. Our objective initially was to keep it on this side of the fire, of the 101, but we were unsuccessful, unsuccessful in that regard. When the fire got to that location, the winds were going approximately 30 miles per hour with gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour. Some of the challenges that we've had today with our aircraft because of the significant winds and the wind gust and low visibility, there were times throughout the day where we had to ground our fixed wing and rotary uh, aircraft because of the dangers associated with the fire. Also, as it relates to fire service resources, um, we're competing with other fires in the state of California. So we have a significant number of resources here from Southern California. Um, as an example, from my department, um, we have over two thirds of our department that's here in this fire right now. Um, but we still have outstanding orders of hundreds of vehicles and resources as it relates to this incident. And through the state of California, those resources will be coming from other states. Um, currently, we're at 35, we're estimating that we're at 35,000 acres and growing. Um, we have a significant number of structures that are lost. We're not able, unable to give you a number at this time. Um, as you can see, the winds have died down, which will give our firefighters an opportunity to get some rest tonight and continue to uh, protect structures. Our plans are for tomorrow. Um, we expect a, a low in the weather, so we're going to try to get perimeter control to uh, contain the fire to the extent that we can because of wind shift. We're going to try to change out some crews because some people would have been here for two days with no rest. And in conclusion, after tomorrow, we're expecting another wind event Sunday. So there's not going to be any relief in relation to this firefight, but I can tell you that our firefighters and our first responders are doing all that they can to protect lives, the property, and the environment in this region. And finally, I would like to just say to our citizens that are watching that have not been evacuated, that if you get an evacuation order, please evacuate. There's been several instances where our firefighters have been hampered today trying to get in to protect structures, only to be confronted with people that have not evacuated. And when you do that, that puts your lives at risk and our firefighters' lives at risk. I can only imagine the impact of someone asking you to leave your home, but we're doing it for your safety and we'll do all that we can to protect your home. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The official standing behind me now will be available to you. If you have questions, we're gonna have breakout sessions. Thank you for your attendance.